I made 45% in the stock market during the last 3 years, which I considered a pretty decent return. However, that only lasted until I found out that Steven made 250% in Bitcoin. Seriously, I'm way smarter than that guy, but if I don't get on the crypto train now, am I going to be left behind? Bitcoin is rat poison squared. Bitcoin is the future. Bitcoin is probably the worst bubble since the tulip craze in the 17th century. No, in fact, it's worse. At least tulips look and smell great for a while. Bitcoin is the ultimate greater fool's game. What? Nah, don't listen to that guy. He's just mad because he missed the rally and doesn't understand the technology. Bitcoin is the next step in digitization. We digitize newspapers, videos, meetings and relationships. Now we're going to digitize money. Have fun being poor, Mr. Bear. Come on, guys, you're just giving me your opinions right now. If you really want to help me, you must promise to remain calm and rational. Please? Fine. Have it your way. Mr. Bull, can you tell me why Bitcoin deserves to have a $500 billion valuation currently? Almost the same as PayPal, Visa and MasterCard combined. Or, better yet, why it deserves to be valued even higher than that? After all, I want my invested money to grow. <laughs> $500 billion valuation. Uh. Well, if Mr. Bear can just shut up for a second, I'll answer that question for you. Mr. Bear, please. <sighs> Fine. Thank you. Allow me to talk a little bit about the bigger picture. Money come and go, and the adoption of one monetary standard over another is the rule rather than the exception throughout history. Salt, cattle, wampum belts, seashells, coins made out of precious metals. We've seen all these things come and go. Now crypto is replacing fiat money. Why? Because we have advanced to a stage where this is technologically feasible. And because people have grown tired of the current monetary system. Western governments have raised inequalities and devalued the currency of the people for way too long. Our current financial system reminds me a little of that marshmallow experiment at Stanford in the 1970s. You mean the one where kids got an additional marshmallow after 15 minutes if they managed not to eat the first one? Yeah, only that our current politicians would punish the kids that managed to wait by removing their marshmallow. That's what they're doing when they keep printing money. They punish the people who are saving in the national currency by making what they saved less valuable through inflation. It's time to change that, and Bitcoin is decentralized, and so it cannot be controlled by any government or any other middleman. It is controlled by us, the people. It's the most democratic currency ever invented. Man, there's so much that I do not agree with here, but go on. What do you mean, Mr. Bull? Why is there no inflation in Bitcoin? In Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto invented digital scarcity. There's a capped supply of 21 million coins, and code and incentives will ensure that it stays that way. Finally, individuals have a lifeboat in the form of a technical solution that can help them escape the financial clout of the government that they live under. So, you're saying that Bitcoin is superior as a currency, and that people will value it because of that? Yes, Bitcoin will be adopted by the people, bottom up. As it does this, it will overtake the value of the fiat currencies that it replaces. For example, the US M2 money supply, which pretty much means all dollars in circulation right now, is valued at around $22 trillion. All cryptocurrencies combined are valued at approximately $1 trillion, not even a twentieth of that. Bitcoin, as you said before, is valued at around $500 billion. It's the tip of the spear in the crypto universe. There's a massive upside here. Moon potential for the future. <laughs> That's a lot of nonsense right there. Excuse me? I think both Mr. Bull and I know that scarcity in supply isn't the only thing determining if a currency is useful or not. What other properties are important, do you mean? Well, for starters, I think that it should also be generally accepted everywhere and that it should be fast, cheap and easy to use. Also, it should not fluctuate too much in value. On all these aspects, Bitcoin has some improvements to do before I'm convinced of its usefulness as a currency. Let's start with the fast and cheap part. 
Right now, transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain are being executed approximately every 10 minutes. That's how often one new block is created. Each block can contain one megabyte of code. And together, these two constraints make it so that currently, three to seven transactions can be made every second in Bitcoin. Something like that. Am I correct here, Mr. Bull? I know where you're going with this and you're wrong. You focus way too much on where we are right now. Do you think that anyone looked at Internet 1.0 and said, Wow, this thing looks amazing. I bet that everyone will spend almost all their time online in 30 years. No. Just let me finish, okay? Visa does something like 250 times as many transactions a day as Bitcoin can handle each day at maximum. Let's say that you want to grab a cup of coffee and you want to pay in Bitcoin and use the Bitcoin blockchain. Not only would you have to wait for a new block to be mined for the owner of the coffee shop to verify your transaction, which would take a few minutes at minimum, but you would also have to pay something like $2 on average for this transaction. In worst case, you would stand in that coffee shop on April 21st, 2021, when prices spiked at almost $63 per transaction. That's one hell of an expensive coffee, Mr. Bull. You are talking about making transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain, but you're excluding both the potential use of third parties and of ledger technology. You know that I can use PayPal to pay with cryptos, right? True, but in that case, you're effectively trusting someone else to do the job of the central banks. You are back at having a middleman that can potentially do you harm. Because if the dollar or any other fiat currency doesn't work to fuel this layer, which it does in the case of PayPal, by the way, some other app-issued money must be created. And this money cannot exist on a blockchain, because in that case, it will just run into the same problems as Bitcoin has. You can't get away from the fact that decentralized blockchains are not geared towards speed. Now, I just think that you are a bit unimaginative here. Moreover, it is ill-suited as a currency because of its highly volatile price. Tell me this, Mr. Bull. Would you be willing to rent my apartment and sign a contract that says that you will have to pay in Bitcoin? I don't find your apartment too attractive, Mr. Bear, so I probably wouldn't want to pay you even in fiat, I'm afraid. <laughs> ha ha ha. Have it your way. Pretend that someone is renting out a place that you are interested in then. Would you be willing to write a 12-month contract which states that you should pay them a fixed amount of Bitcoin each month? Hmm... I think you're trying to set up some sort of trap here. What's your point? Just answer the question. No? Okay, well, I think most people would, just like you are now, be very hesitant to do that. Why? Because they don't want to sign an agreement using a currency that is as volatile as Bitcoin is. Imagine paying the equivalent of $1,000 in rent the first month of the year, but ending up having to pay $3,000 during the last month. That's how volatile Bitcoin is. Long-term contracts are quite standard in the business world. I really do not think that any of them are done in Bitcoin. Again, you are too focused on where we are right now. This volatility could go down in the future as Bitcoin is wider accepted as a currency. Besides, even if it has these deficiencies that you've stated, it is well worth the trouble, given that at least you don't lose money every day by hodling it. Look at a place like Venezuela. These people would have traded the complete annihilation of their currency for the volatility of Bitcoin at the drop of a hat. Even the strongest fiat, such as the American dollar, have lost almost 95% of its value during the last 100 years. How stupid does one have to be to hold on to it for the next 100? What? Who would hold on to cash over the long term as some sort of investment? I put most of my paycheck towards the stock market or rental properties as soon as I get it. I don't sit around holding cash on hand. Great! And what are your returns on those investments during the last three years? Uh, how much did you say that you had in Luna again? Man, that's low. Sorry, too early? Wait, wait, wait. I'd really love to talk about your views on Bitcoin as an investment, perhaps even without it becoming an important currency. But... Can we just finish the discussion about Bitcoin's user case as a currency first? Yeah, I have a few more comments that I know Mr. Bear won't be able to refute. Have you ever tried sending money abroad, Mr. Bear? No, I don't think I have. There are billions of dollars being transferred in remittance each year, meaning from a foreign worker back to their homeland. 
the IMF expected the number to be $596 billion in 2017. And let me tell you, it's better to strap money to an envelope than it is to go through the traditional banking system if you want to, for example, send money to Indonesia. Have you ever tried sending money on a Sunday? Or on any day for that matter after 5 p.m.? Well, uh, yes. That didn't work out so well, correct? Because apparently God wants even money transfers to be paused on the Sabbath. Well, I think a lot of people find this very inconvenient. And guess what? Bitcoin solves these problems. Transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain do not care if an American is exchanging money with a fellow American or if a Swede is exchanging money with someone from India. Moreover, the transactions can be made 24-7, 365, meaning at any time. You say Bitcoin is inefficient for buying a cup of coffee, but it can be used to solve a 596 billion remittance problem. I think you're right about this one. However, I think that when you put this in perspective to what the currency is valued at right now, about $500 billion, you'll see that something is off. You said $596 billion of transfers? Visa's transactional volume was approximately 20 times that during the last 12 months. And Visa's market cap is still way lower than Bitcoin's. I want to get back to what I think is one of your core arguments. You say that Bitcoin is digital scarcity, that it cannot be inflated. However, you seem to forget that new cryptos are being created every day. Bitcoin's code is out there. An exact replica can be created, just with another name. So, isn't there inflation, really? What do you mean, Mr. Bear? Are you saying that if more cryptos are created, they compete with Bitcoin? Exactly. You are missing an important point here. Much like a picture of the Mona Lisa isn't the real thing, shitcoins aren't bitcoins. You know, there's an unlimited supply of rocks out there, but people still churn through them to reach the gold. There are incredible network effects in place, making it nearly impossible for any other crypto to overtake bitcoins dominance. Just look at the price. While tons of cryptos have been created during the last few years, just like you mentioned, Bitcoin has only increased in value. I agree that there are network effects in place which may make it difficult to replace Bitcoin, but you cannot have it both ways. Fiat has the strongest network effects around. If you think that network effects are most important, then fiat will reign. If you think that technology is most important, then other cryptos, or something else entirely for all that I know, can replace Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not as energy efficient as any crypto that uses proof of stake instead of proof of work. It is not as anonymous slash secure as others. It cannot handle as many transactions per second as some. The list goes on and on. I think you overestimate the power of these network effects a little bit. They don't make anything undefeatable. MySpace was a network and had a first mover's advantage. VHS was kind of a network. CDs. What about Nintendo 64? EverQuest? Someone? The crypto space right now is like Game of Thrones. And I think no one knows yet if Bitcoin is a Ned Stark or a Jon Snow. We must stop pretending that you think about Bitcoin as a currency, Mr. Bull. The median transaction value on the Bitcoin blockchain is somewhere in the region of $500 to $700 currently. That's not money spent on everyday purchases. Per definition, you do not hodl with diamond hands the currency you are using for your day-to-day -day expenses. Jesus, you really lack imagination. What if, perhaps, Bitcoin is an investment right now and a currency in the future? Did you think about that possibility? <laughs> we should probably introduce a counter for every time you say the word future, just to show how much you rely on it in your argumentation. I think that was the... Fifth time already? Okay, okay, guys. Can we please try to stay away from each other's throats? I've heard both sides now on the currency part. What? Come on, I haven't even mentioned that the mining of Bitcoin requires more energy than the whole country of Australia. If we want to expand the usage of this devourer of electricity, we may as well say bye-bye to the Paris Agreement and any other plans we have for preventing climate change. Do you think today's politicians will go easy on a wider adoption of such a currency? 
Stop, stop. I think I know who I agree more with, but I want to hear your thoughts about Bitcoin as an investment. Whether or not it will become the leading currency of the future, is it a good investment for the next few years? This is one of the amazing properties of Bitcoin. While I and Mr. Bear don't really seem to be able to agree, in my opinion, there's a non-zero probability that Bitcoin will become an important currency of the future. But there's a second option too. This is that Bitcoin will overtake gold as the hardest asset around. The one asset that investors turn to for protection against inflation. Bitcoin is digital gold. And indeed, there's a massive moon potential for the future here too. The market cap of Bitcoin is currently just 1 20th of the market cap of gold. That's a massive upside. Bitcoin and gold are not used for the same purposes, not even by investors. Quite a bit of gold is being used in industry and let's not forget about jewelry. Unlike Bitcoin, gold has a clear user case. Bitcoin's only user case is speculation. Look at the percentage of turnover of the total market cap of Bitcoin and compare that to gold. You'll see how much speculation there is in the currency. What data are you looking at? Mr. Bear cannot disagree with facts. And the fact is that Bitcoin is up. Whether it is the number of transactions, the market participants, the computing power, the number of institutions, the number of corporations, the number of retail investors, every single one of those data points suggests that the adoption of Bitcoin is increasing. Let me tell you a little story. Imagine that you are a turkey who lives on a farm. Every day you are being taken care of by the family who owns the farm. For 1000 days, they've kept you safe and well fed. And for every passing day, you are becoming more and more convinced that these farmers must be the greatest creatures alive. Then, suddenly, on day number 1001, it's Thanksgiving. And the farmers suddenly aren't so kind anymore. I'm not particularly surprised by the fact that more and more people are joining this, what I would like to call cryptomania. The Bitcoin story becomes more and more believable for every day that passes, but I think that eventually a lot of people will realize that they have been turkeys. Just ask the last buyers during the tulip mania, those who purchased something like JDS Uniface during the dot-com bubble, or the final buyers of Luna for that matter. It looks very attractive to join the Bitcoin train right now, but what happens when overnight Lamborghini stories are replaced by I extended my mortgage and now I'm broke stories? Then Bitcoin must have a user case which it can rely on because the speculative demand will be gone. You're not exactly the first person who suggests the death of Bitcoin, Mr. Bear. Many others have been dismissing it and they've all been wrong. I'm getting the impression that you need to see a user case for something to be valuable, but I think you're missing something here. People assign value to things, not the other way around. It doesn't always have to be 100% rational. In fact, many times it isn't. Fiat is not worth anything in itself. It's the trust that people give to it that makes it valuable. It's simple supply and demand. If the number of people who want to get in exceeds the number who want to get out, Bitcoin will rise in price. You are correct about that, but this applies for any asset with a limited supply. Why would you rather own Bitcoin than a rental property in New York? Or stocks in a company with a product that you love? Isn't that obvious? Because real estate and stocks don't have the same potential as Bitcoin does. Just look at the graph. You don't have to take my word for it though. Paul Tudor Jones, Stan Druckenmiller and Jim Simons are in Bitcoin. Even huge institutions such as Goldman Sachs is starting to show an interest in it. Hold on, hold on. You are talking about trading here. These people do not usually hold their positions for the long run. That's a huge difference. Warren Buffett once bought 3,500 tons of silver and I can promise you that he didn't do that because he thought that silver would outperform the stock market in the long run. In the end, Bitcoin is an unproductive asset. And the fact is that unproductive assets just haven't been such great investments historically. If you purchase one ounce of gold and put it under your mattress and then bring it out 50 years later, it will still just be one ounce of gold. On the other hand, if you buy, for example, an apartment in New York, you can rent out the place and receive monthly payments and you still own it 50 years later 
just like you do with the gold. Do you understand the difference? Productive assets just have a more favorable structure as investments. I don't know how this matters. Why would I care if I get my returns in the form of a monthly cash payment or in the form of price appreciation, or both? It's the total return that matters, meaning price appreciation plus cash payments. Well, the difference is that if you only rely on price appreciation in your investment case, you have just one way out. That's selling to someone else. Selling to an even greater fool. If you look at Bitcoin holders as a group, they haven't earned anything. Zero. They've only been trading money with each other. For every seller, there's been a buyer and vice versa. With a productive asset, you have a heads, I win, tails, I don't lose much situation. If you don't want to buy my Apple stock at a higher price than I've paid for it, that's fine with me, because I can also just sit back and collect the dividends. Let me give you two historical examples of the returns of some famous unproductive assets. The most famous one is, of course, gold. A little more than 2,000 years ago, during Julius Caesar's reign in ancient Rome, a legionnaire had to give up approximately 4.6 months of work for one ounce of gold. Today, the median full-time working man in America must give up only 0.3 months. In other words, gold is much less valuable today in terms of labor than it was back then. You'll see a similar story if you compare the average American worker in 1900 with the American worker in 2019. The 1900 person had to work for 0.45 months for an ounce of gold and the 2019 person had to work for just 0.25 months. That's negative returns for these long-term time horizons. Even a really superior unproductive asset like a Van Gogh painting hasn't returned so much over a century. I just don't see why cryptos would become the first to beat this lame track record. How about uh, everything there is divided by 21 million? Is that a good enough return for you? What do you mean, Mr. Bull? I think there's a non-zero probability that central banks will adopt Bitcoin as their main currency in the future. If this happens, it could reasonably overtake the value of currencies and gold and then everything would be valued in a limited number of bitcoins. As human productivity grows, the value of each bitcoin will just continue to grow as long as GDP does. Everything in our society would be priced in this limited number of coins, and as the proceeds grow, so does the value of bitcoin. This just sounds highly speculative to me. Do you know what Ray Dalio says? Those who live by the crystal ball will eat shattered glass. Your investment case is built on dodging a ton of bullets, all while hitting quite a few jackpots. You're saying that something which is only used in a few thousand transactions a day will take on and beat the most important currency in history? That's a little like saying that a six-year-old who just scored his first goal will be the next Messi. Bitcoin aspires to become the unquestionable global currency. Some aspirations become true. My love has come along. But most of them do not. When you entered this competition, did you really believe that you could become what you're standing on now, the American Idol? Yes, sir. Well, then you're deaf. I just think that I can find more favorable odds by searching for individually mispriced companies in the stock market. Bitcoin is one of the greatest tools ever invented for the advancement of human liberty. There are three eras of currency. Commodity-based, politically-based, and now math-based. Bitcoin is like the internet. It connects strangers around the world without a need of a middleman. Would you go back in time and invest in the infant internet if you could? I most definitely would. I think I know what to do now. Thank you guys. Whether Mr. Bull or Mr. Bear is right cannot be answered with certainty at this point. Only the real world will tell us how things unfold in the end. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Who won this debate? Did someone miss an important point? Make your case in the comments. Cheers guys!